Right, so I'm just getting done with this latest landscaping project. Now, I just want to tell y'all that normally when I do a project for clients or potential clients, I like to have them be a part of the design and the plant selection process. Uh, you know, and it's because, I mean, after all, it is your yard and you got to look at this every day. So I want to be, whatever I do, I want it to be something that looks nice to you and you enjoy looking at and that you're happy with. You know, that's the, uh, at the end of the day. But this particular client here, she wanted nothing to do with that process. Uh, she told me to choose everything. She didn't know much about plants, so she put it all on me. And I pretty much chose plants that you have to, um, that has to be maintained by a professional. And that looks manicured. When, it, when everything comes together, it looks manicured. So let me go ahead and show y'all what I did. Uh, this was another fun project uh, i had to try to use some creativity with this design so y'all tell me what y'all think about it all right so let's start with uh, this particular edging that i chose now anyone that knows me know that I don't I don't fool around with that plastic edging I just don't like it it don't last so I chose this brick edging here and unlike the edging that was around the mailbox this is securely in the ground and the reason I like to do it like this is because I like to keep it maybe like an inch or an inch and a half maybe two inches higher than the grass when it's cut and it just looks better that way and also it works out just in case your lawn man should happen to bump into it with the lawnmower you ain't got to worry about it getting knocked over because you know the lawn man gets blamed for everything that's broken in the yard you know sprinkler heads and that don't be us breaking the sprinkler heads that that be the dog the dog be chewing the sprinkler heads up so you need to go ahead and get rid of the dog and keep your lawn man uh, so yeah, but that's why I like to sink them down. A lot of these I had to cut so they could fit this, fit these curves and everything. I had to cut up, cut a, quite a few of them. So it's customized to whatever design. Now these plants here that I chose, these are Green Island ficus. In about a year or so, you won't see no gaps. Won't be no gaps in between, no spaces. Everything's gonna fill in. It'll be one continuous shrub. This is about 71 that I planted in this area here. And another nine over there. So it was 80 altogether. So we got your green island ficus here. And I want to break it up a little bit. I didn't want to, you know, have the green island ficus going all the way to the, to the walkway. So these here, I got 20 of these. This is called Mexican heather. And I just want to break it up, you know, add a little bit of color to it. Um, kind of just, you know, give it a different look. So that's Mexican heather there. Uh, and right here, here's the island. Again, I had to cut quite a few of these uh, these bricks to form this design that I put here uh, right here is the this is the Robolini palm one of my favorite palm trees uh, this is actually six feet tall out of the ground in the pot it was six feet tall but a foot and a half of it is in the ground and I tell you that bad boy there the hole I had to dig I had to dig dig out two wheelbarrows full of dirt to get that tree in in that hole well, I mean to get in the ground two wheelbarrows full but this is you know this is one of my favorite uh, you just got to be careful because you know they got a lot of thorns and thistles on them and I done got quite a few you know stuck in my finger and then right here this is the this is called Exor Dwarf this this will be a nice another nice uh, manicured manicured uh, shrub when everything comes together 
You won't see no gaps, no spaces, everything in about a year or so. It should be um, mature enough where you won't see no spaces. And then this one has a, a pretty orange flower, if you can see that. Certain times of the year, all you see is orange. It has more orange on it than green. So, but yeah, these, these particular plants, they're going to have to be maintained uh, by a professional. Somebody that know what they're doing. It'll probably be me, you know. But, um, you know, it's just for it to have the look that's intended, it's going to have to be done by a professional. All right, so and right here, you see that mailbox. Mailbox is on the outside. The mailbox had to go. I couldn't, uh, I couldn't leave that. It wasn't matching up with the with the new landscape, so I had to go ahead and get rid of that. And um, I think it's, it looks better outside anyway. And besides, like I said, that edging. I don't know who did it, but whoever put that edging around, I think they just sat it right on top of the grass. They didn't even take no time and put no effort into putting them down into the to the ground. But there we have it, another another job complete. Uh, and then I got two more videos that I put on YouTube uh, that just kind of like shows the step by step process. So y'all can check those out on my YouTube channel, Travel and Landscaping with Bess. Uh, subscribe to it. I'd appreciate it. Hit the like button, share, all that other stuff. Uh, and I got some more videos coming up. I actually got a video where I'm gonna show what those plants, uh, the Green Island ficus, what they'll look like uh, when they get mature and uh, established. I got a video. I'll show how they're supposed to look. And uh, got some travel videos coming up real soon. So y'all might want to check that out when I upload them. All right. So to the next one. Peace.